Coming up on today's Locked On Big Ten, Michigan snaps the losing streak against Ohio State and is headed to the Big Ten title game this weekend to face off against Iowa, who won the scramble for the West. We've got a whole lot to talk about on today's show, plus Big Ten basketballs facing off against the ACC in the early part of the week, and then we'll have conference play by the end of the week. We've got a lot to talk about here on the show. You're listening in to Locked On Big Ten. <laughs> You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten, everything you need to know about the Big Ten Conference every single day of the week, Monday through Friday. Hope you had a good holiday. I guess it wasn't Monday through Friday last week with Thanksgiving, but again, hope you enjoyed your holiday weekend, and we're back with you here on a Monday. I'm Nate Dickinson. Jay Stevens usually with us here on a Monday. He's feeling a bit under the weather, so uh, of course, send your wishes over to Jay. Make sure he's doing good, and we'll hopefully have him back ready to go next week, or maybe even sooner, because I do want to get his thoughts on the Buckeyes game over the weekend, and it would have been great to have him on here, but we've still got plenty to talk about, and we will be breaking down that game in just a little bit here on the show. So we'll have that in just a minute, but first, let's start off by looking around the Big Ten, seeing what is going on right now around this conference, and of course, the biggest news is what happened over the course of a rivalry weekend. We had Four games that mattered, or could potentially matter across the Big Ten. We talked about that last week. On Friday night, Iowa ended up sealing up some things in the Big Ten West by beating Nebraska. It made it so that Indiana-Purdue would no longer matter. Nebraska would have had to win that game for that rivalry matchup to have any impact on who won the West. So Iowa, with winning on Friday, in a game again we'll get to in how they matched up against Nebraska, but that win clinched at least their chance at winning the Big Ten. It was still Wisconsin's to lose, but as long as Minnesota beat Wisconsin, it would be Iowa who won the Big Ten title. It it would be the Hawkeyes who went to Indianapolis, and as we saw on Saturday, Minnesota was able to pick up a big win against the Badgers for the first time in a long time. P.J. Fleck absolutely ecstatic on the sideline as that game was wrapping up to get the Gophers that win, and who knows what it means for what Minnesota ends up doing in bowl season. We'll figure that out soon, too, and have that conversation on the show this week as well. But, of course, we have to talk about Michigan-Ohio State, too. Iowa ends up winning the Big Ten West to send Iowa to, or to send them over to Indianapolis Michigan beats Ohio State for the first time in nine seasons, ends up breaking an eight-game losing streak, and gets a win for Coach Harbaugh that was the first against Ohio State at his tenure with the Wolverines, and uh, honestly takes a whole lot of heat off of him as he will head to Indianapolis as well. That obviously the big news. We're going to get into those games in just a minute here on the show. Elsewhere, as I mentioned, The Big Ten ACC Challenge, and yes, this year it is called the Big Ten ACC Challenge, not the ACC Big Ten Challenge. It starts up today, two matchups between these two powerhouse basketball conferences. Illinois is going to face off against Notre Dame, a matchup that I'm going to be watching later on at 8 Central Time, if you're on that side of the conference, 9 if you're on the Eastern Time Zone side, but it's going to be a good one there. And then Virginia plays Iowa in a game that starts up two hours before that. Those are the only two matchups today, but I'm looking forward to watching, again, this matchup. We'll talk about it more. There's some good games for us to look forward to in this challenge, and again, it always has a nice little gauge for where the Big Ten's at at the start of the season, because the ACC is, I'd say, year in and year out, the most consistent competitor with the Big Ten as to uh, who's the best conference in basketball. I mean, Big 12's been good the last couple of years, But I'd say over the course of the last, like, 20, 25 seasons, it's been either the Big Ten or the ACC. Big East, maybe, uh, when it was still around. But, uh, again, we'll talk more about the basketball later on in the show, too. Uh, Not a single ranked matchup in the bunch, by the way, in that challenge. Usually you have at least one ranked-on-ranked team game. There are ranked teams, obviously, playing, but uh, none of them playing each other. We'll talk more about that again later on in the program, too. Also... By the end of the week, we're going to have Big Ten basketball. I talked about this when the schedules were coming out for teams, but there's this one-week period at the end of this week up until the end of next week 
where Big Ten teams are going to be playing against each other and starting conference play a little bit early, starting to at least get you a little bit more excited for what's coming in the new year. It's going to be really fun to watch. We're going to look at some of the key matchups because there are some really, really good games coming up in that week too. That may be a little bit later on in the week as we start to preview those matchups, but we still have plenty to talk about here today. Of course, we haven't even started to dive into Michigan-Ohio State. The Wolverines beat the Buckeyes to head to the Big Ten Championship game. We'll break down how they did it after Ohio State had looked unstoppable for the majority of the season after losing to Oregon. That's coming up right here on Locked on Big Ten. We're also going to talk about everything going on with the Big Ten ACC Challenge. You're going to hear all of it here as we continue along with the show. Everything you need to know about the Big Ten Conference every single day, Monday through Friday. Hey, I've been telling you, I'm going to keep telling you about prize picks. It, when it comes to daily fantasy, nobody does it at the college level quite like prize picks does. There's all sorts of sites out there for you to play fantasy sports in pretty much any sport, but it's a lot of professional stuff. You don't have a lot of people who are putting in that effort on their sites to list out all the players that honestly are in college sports. There's a bunch of them, too many, to be honest, for most, but not prize picks. They've put in the work, and if you want to play daily fantasy sports with your favorite college athletes. We're talking power five. We're talking mid-major. It's really, really in-depth kind of stuff, and you can find exactly what you're looking for over at Prize Picks. So head on over to the site, prizepicks.com. Use the promo code Locked On to get a 100% bonus on your first deposit up to $100, or you can always download the app too on the App Store or wherever you get your apps on whatever phone you might have. Again, prizepicks.com has a kind of selection that you're not going to be able to find anywhere else for daily fantasy sports. So head on over to the site, use our promo code locked on, or download the app wherever you're at right now and get started. At least give it a look because this is not just another daily fantasy site. This is offering more, providing more opportunity, giving you a different kind of way to play. It's worth at least giving a look. Welcome back into Locked On Big Ten. Thanks for making the show your first listen every single day of the week. A reminder, today's show is brought to you in part by NetSuite. It's brought to you, NetSuite, the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. Head to netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA for special end of year financing on the number one financial system for growing businesses. That's NetSuite helping us get you the show today. All right, let's start to break down what happened over the weekend in Big Ten football. Obviously, we can't avoid talking about it anymore. Michigan beats Ohio State 42-27, to the final score. The Buckeyes get shocked in Ann Arbor. Jim Harbaugh gets his first win against Ohio State as a coach in what may be the biggest meeting between these two teams in his tenure as, Ohio, or as Michigan's head coach. It was huge for him, huge for the program. Michigan's heading to Indianapolis next week now to face off against Iowa. But I don't think anyone would argue with the fact that this was the biggest win of the season for the Wolverines, barring a national championship, of course. It obviously changes what we're thinking about for the rest of the season as far as the playoff picture out of the Big Ten. It obviously changes a whole lot between what we have with Jim Harbaugh and this Michigan-Ohio State rivalry. We're, we're going to have to talk about all that at some point. But right now, let's just get into this game. How exactly did Michigan beat Ohio State? Because to be quite honest, going into this matchup, I had talked about it here. I had gone on other stations and talked about things. I did not see Michigan winning this football game or even coming close. I thought that seven-point spread that it opened at was really just for entertainment to get those Michigan bets in to try and draw in that money. And I thought Ohio State was going to blow out Michigan, not in the same fashion that it blew out Michigan State, but I didn't think that Michigan was going to look all that much better. Just because Ohio State's that good. Even when you're playing well against the Buckeyes, they're going to put up enough points where you got to really, really put the foot on the gas. And that's where my first point stands, is because give credit where credit's due, Michigan put up points. Michigan ran with Ohio State the entire way and never, never let the Buckeyes get a lead, get back into this. Michigan had control the entire time. That's something I feel like you realize if you're a Wolverines fan, player, coach, that's something you're going to have to do if you want to beat the Buckeyes. Do not give them a chance to take anything. And ever since Michigan 
took the lead back early in the second quarter. Wolverines never looked back. Led the entire way, never let Ohio State get back within arm's reach even, as the offense absolutely exploded for the Wolverines. Hassan Askins obviously went off, and that's another one of the more surprising things. His five touchdowns came immediately after Kenneth Walker III couldn't do the same against Ohio State. I think everyone was feeling good. We were talking about last week about how Michigan was maybe going to have to try and pass its way into this game. J.J. McCarthy. And uh, I'm absolutely spacing out on Michigan's other starting quarterback's name for some reason. But it, the point is, these teams, when they're facing off, uh, I totally lost. I got to look up that guy's name now. I'm sorry. I, I, I And I know people are yelling at me, too. I'm thinking it, it was, I'm getting Aiden McConnell in my head. I know that's Purdue quarterback. I know that's not it. But now I got to look up this guy's name and absolutely stop the show for you guys to try and figure out what this is. Cade McNamara. It's the, it's the Mick names. McCarthy, McNamara, McConnell. Yeah, okay. Cade McNamara, obviously, is the person I'm talking about. He didn't have a day. But Hassan Haskins came through and, and absolutely dominated this Ohio State defense in a way that I don't think anyone predicted. Even the people who in Vegas had this game at just a touchdown spread going into the week. I don't know if anyone thought that Michigan was going to do it quite that way in such a quite dominant fashion in the ground game with what Haskins was able to do. That was so super impressive, what Michigan was able to do on offense, despite not having a great day for McNamara. He was accurate, but didn't throw the ball a lot, didn't have to throw a ball a lot, but ended up with the only turnover of the day as well, an interception. But aside from all that, Ohio State still could have, and honestly, I think, on many days would have put up a whole lot more points than it did in that 27, given the stat line that you see. This was maybe my biggest takeaway as to why Ohio State lost this game. Give all the credit to Michigan in scoring the points, because it did everything it needed to to beat that Ohio State defense. But when it comes to why Ohio State was only putting up 27 points in this game, why it only had 13 points going into the fourth quarter, was because of Ohio State mistakes in penalties. Not because of Michigan slowing down the Buckeyes at all. I mean, you look at the stat line. C.J. Stroud, 394, two touchdowns. Travion Henderson had 74 yards and a score. Efficient on the ground. Not a great game from him, but he pounded the rock and did what he was supposed to do. The Buckeye receivers and Jigba, Wilson, Alave, they all got theirs. When you look at this stat line, you can see this team doing that same thing. Having that same kind of day and easily putting up the 42 points it would have needed to beat Michigan. But the difference, seven penalties on offense, a total of 10 penalties in the game to just two for the Wolverines, and it stunted off Ohio State's scoring. It's held them down to 27 points when, again, I think if they play a little bit of a cleaner game, don't let drives get halted there by those penalties, you easily could see Ohio State scoring two more touchdowns in this matchup. Easily, could on any day, with that kind of number, 400 yards passing, the reason there aren't more touchdowns is because, again, things got stopped up. Ohio State stopped itself with the penalties just as much as Michigan stopped it and, and kept the pressure on as well. Again, Ohio State had to play a different kind of game in late here from behind in a way that they weren't used to because of what Michigan did. And again, I'm not giving anything to Ohio State here because they could not stop Michigan at all. I don't know why that is. But as far as why Ohio State wasn't able to do what had been the safety blanket in scoring a whole bunch of points, no matter what that defense did, it was because the offense was messing up in ways that were just killing their drives. And as a result, Ohio State's playoff chance is likely done. They're not going to the Big Ten title game in Michigan. It looks like, we'll talk about this later in the week, Michigan, it looks like, could be the only chance that Big Ten has at sending a team to that college football play. I, I don't, we're going to have to look at what the rankings end up saying. I haven't honestly looked at how things are going to shift around now and who moves up to what, but we'll talk about all of that at some point later this week. But the point is, this definitely changes everything. And I'm excited to hear from the people that we'll have on later on again about exactly what they have to say about what happened in this game in particular because it, it was something else. Unexpected different than what I think everyone, when they went through the head in their scenarios of 
what this game would be. I, I don't think a lot of people had this. We're going to talk about it later in the week. Of course, we've got a Big Ten championship to lead up to as well. But as far as just this game in particular, Michigan just beat Ohio State on offense, and Ohio State beat itself when the Buckeyes were out on the field. That is why Michigan won this game, because 27 points, no matter how many points Michigan scored, that's the big surprise, is that Ohio State put up less than 30 on that Wolverines team. That was what was really, really unexpected. So much talking in that game, we didn't even get to the West side of things. We will, don't worry about that. we Going to talk a little bit about Iowa again, Minnesota, and Wisconsin deciding the Big Ten West there through Friday and Saturday, and we'll break down what chance Iowa has this weekend against Michigan. We'll see what we get into in our final segment and how much time we have here on Locked on Big Ten. I'm Nate Dickinson. I'll be back in just a minute. Today's episode of Locked on Big Ten is brought to you in part by NetSuite. Uh, this is it, the putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the title is yours. But on the backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software. To see the full picture, you need to upsuite, upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. If I can get it out in time. And with NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of the competition. 93% of surveyed businesses increased their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite. So th this is something that can start making you money right away. Saving you money right away. Over 27,000 businesses already use the service, and right now, through the end of the year, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind program to those ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA. Head to netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA for special end-of-the-year financing for those ready to upgrade. Again, netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA. Today's show is also brought to you in part by Built Bar. You already know about Built Bar. They got new flavors coming out all the time. And right now, you can get at least 20% off today only for everything delicious and healthy site-wide. Again, that's 20% off site-wide. Even bigger discounts on Built Boost, Broth, and Built Swag as well. Go to Built.com for these incredibly tasting bars and get 20% off anything today. And if you don't end up getting in on anything today, remember, use our code LOCKED20 before it's too late. Again, Cyber Monday, 20% off site-wide. Use our promo code LOCKED20 to get in on those deals too. Back here on Locked On Big Ten. All right, we didn't really get to talk all that much about uh, the west side of the Big Ten here. I was hoping to get more of that in when we were talking more Michigan-Ohio State, but that's okay. We'll get into a little bit of, bit of it now because it was a little less complicated despite it involving a few more games. Less complicated than we thought it was going to be at least. As I mentioned, Iowa beat Nebraska on Friday. I won't get into too much how exactly Nebraska ended up blowing that game. But after 19 unanswered points, I think it was in the fourth quarter, a 19-0 run to end it from the Hawkeyes, they won and secured that at least they would win the Big Ten if Wisconsin lost to Minnesota. They could have still won it by losing to Nebraska, but again, we'll get into all of that. At least, I no, I think I'm wrong there. Yeah, no, no, they couldn't have. They, they needed to win, but it would have still been a bit up in the air as to who would have won between Wisconsin and Minnesota. Yeah, again, I, don't, I won't go into all those scenarios again. Point is, with Iowa winning on Friday, it was either going to be Iowa or Wisconsin. Wisconsin then had to beat Minnesota. It lost, so Iowa's headed to the Big Ten Championship. That's the short of it. The longer is that Iowa really blew, or I'm sorry, Nebraska really blew this game on Friday night. And I understand how good Minnesota fans must be feeling right now after beating Wisconsin. But after Minnesota won that game, I couldn't help but thinking about the fact that, one, you just sent Iowa to the Big Ten Championship game, which doesn't feel great. It's not Wisconsin, so it's probably better, but still. And two, gosh, if Nebraska just hadn't have blown that, Minnesota would have been the team heading to Indianapolis. I mean, because Purdue beat Indiana, too, handily. Nebraska would have beaten Iowa, and obviously Minnesota beats Wisconsin. Those were the th three things Minnesota needed to happen 
And it was just one, one blown, blown fourth quarter by the Cornhuskers in a series of what had been a bunch of blown games for the Cornhuskers this season, in which Minnesota ended up not heading to that game, and it ends up being Iowa going there. I mean, to be fair, there was a big, big part of this season where Iowa was supposed to be the team that was going to be there. Iowa was a top two team at some point, I think. Then that switched to Wisconsin. I don't know if anyone, maybe for a week or two in the middle there, when Minnesota was really, really hot, thought that the Gophers were ever like the favorite favorite to go to this game, even though they were right there the whole way. They kind of flew under the radar. But that's how close Minnesota got to heading to Indianapolis after, honestly, at the beginning of the season, we talked about it. I mean, losing Moa Ibrahim for that whole year to still be in that spot, to still beat Wisconsin at all. And by the way, Minnesota gets Moa Ibrahim back next season, and Tanner Morgan just decided that he's going to come back for another year as well. Yes, he is not out of eligibility at Minnesota either. So, that's going to be fun to watch out of the west side next season. It's going to be really fun to watch Iowa play Michigan this weekend. But we've got a whole lot of time to talk about that. Right now, let's get into basketball. Big Ten ACC Challenge starts up today. As I mentioned, two games, Virginia and Iowa and Notre Dame, Illinois, start off the action between these two conferences. And as I also said at the top of the show, I think this is a really good gauge as to telling where the Big Ten is exactly. Not only that, it also provides like a big, big kind of momentum boost if you end up beating up on the ACC here. I don't know why. It doesn't really end up mattering at all, and no one ever thinks about this at the end of the season. But I guess early in the year, you're waiting for things to get excited about and seeing those big names from another conference wanting to prove that you're the best conference in college basketball. I guess it motivates. But anyway... It's a whole lot of matchups that, again, as I mentioned, aren't ranked games, but we still got good ma- matchups here. A rematch of a 1987 National Championship game. Syracuse facing off against Indiana in the Carrier Dome in New York tomorrow. Another good game, Duke-Ohio State tomorrow night, too. That one will be the late game on ESPN. Starts up at 9.30 Eastern time. On Wednesday, Michigan faces off against North Carolina. Wisconsin plays Georgia Tech. There's a whole bunch of other good matchups. Louisville-Michigan State. Just a couple of teams that have been good at basketball the past few seasons. Florida State plays Purdue. Florida State's off to a good start. I Honestly, I don't know a ton about how good that Florida State team's supposed to be. But, I, I mean, that team is always competitive. I, again, I don't know what they've lost. But it just seems like that team always finds a way to be able to compete. So I'd be interested to watch that game. And hopefully, even if Purdue does blow them out, it'll be really fun to watch one of the best teams in the Big Ten get it done throughout the whole season start of the year but right now I'm a little underwhelmed by the lineup this season on this line on this Big Ten ACC challenge but it's still again going to be a good chance for you to see your team against another good team because some teams schedule really good competition in the non-conference other teams just have those few games out there this is pretty much a guarantee that you're going to have one of those chances to see your team do something against a at the very least legitimate basketball team I remember when I was hosting Locked On Golden Gophers last year, it was a whole lot of nobodies Minnesota had scheduled, especially with just the COVID stuff. It was all local schools. But they did have that Big Ten ACC Challenge game. And being able to play that game, get that start against a good team, was at least, in my opinion, a little bit more of an even scale. Because When everyone's playing these pushover teams, you get an idea of what's not going well. You get an idea of what is going well, but you don't really get to see it, see it, until they get out there against the real competition, you know? You never really know how things are improving or really working. This is a first look at that for many teams. Uh, Some of the teams across college basketball, and to be fair, the schedule this season is a lot more spread out, but this is... Right now, a big opportunity for you to see your team and just kind of get an idea, a feel early in the season of where things are at. Because whether you're playing a really good ACC team or a bottom-of-the-pack one, this is a conference like the Big Ten where anyone can win any day of the week. So you're going to have to bring your best, and we'll see which Big Ten teams are at least ready to do that through the first few weeks of the season. Again, not a whole lot of really, really enticing matchups, but you know your team's going to be playing at least somebody good throughout the week. Just look going forward again. I'd say Illinois, Notre Dame, best game of the night. 
Then we've got, again, Indiana-Syracuse will just be a fun one to watch in the Carrier Dome. And then Ohio State-Duke could be an entertaining matchup as well in the late games. Florida State-Purdue, again, on Tuesday. And then the other matchups to watch, I'd say, uh, Michigan-North Carolina on that Wednesday game. We'll see what happens between Wisconsin and Georgia Tech, too. Just because I'm interested to see just kind of what Wisconsin looks like. Because they've looked pretty good early on in the season two. A lot of teams have looked pretty good, but that's kind of, again, the point of this is that we're going to see how good teams really are when they start to play these ACC teams. I'm back in tomorrow with Kevin McGuire here to break down more from what happened over the weekend, get another person's opinions and takes in here again. Best wishes to Jay Stevens. Hopefully he feels better by the time we get back in here next week. He said he was just feeling a little bit under the weather and had like a little throat thing. So hopefully he's okay. It won't be anything too serious from him. So He'll be back next week. We'll be back tomorrow. This has been Locked On Big Ten. Until then, be sure to give all the other Big Ten teams and shows a listen with your second listen of the day. Thank you for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen every weekday.